Okay. Folks, it's another beautiful day, and you're welcome to another episode of the BJ's Physics Classroom. This episode is a continuation of where we left off the last time, quantity of heat. We dealt with sensible heat, definition of heat energy calorimetry, and uh, Um, so today we are going to continue with measurement of heat. How do we measure heat? So to do this, um, we, we, we have to look at how to determine the specific heat capacity of substances. That is what measurement of heat is all about determination of specific heat capacity of solids and liquids. So that is what today's discussion is going to be centered on. So let's begin. So we look at determination of specific heat capacity of a liquid using the method of mixtures. You know, we have so many methods that are used to determine the specific heat capacity of a liquid. We have method of mixtures, we have the continuous flow method, we have the cooling method, where we use the Newton's law of cooling, and then we have the electrical method. All these are methods that we use. The best among them is the continuous flow apparatus. When we get there, I will tell you more about this, about it. So in today's lesson, we are going to be dealing with Determination of specific heat capacity of liquid using method of mixtures. What is method of mixtures? Here we are talking about three components. Solid, which is a metal. So we pick a solid whose specific capacity is known, usually metal. And then the liquid whose specific capacity we want to determine. And the container, the calorimeter. These are the three components that make up the mixture that we are talking about. So when we say method of mixtures, hmm, when we say method of mixtures, these three components are what make up the method of mixtures. The metal that we are going to use to determine, to do the experiment, the liquid whose specific capacity we want to determine, and the container, which is the calorimeter. Good. So how do we do with this? For this particular lesson, I'm going to use PowerPoint to explain it. In our next lesson, I may, I'm thinking about it, I may, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to get the, the, the apparatus. I will use, you know, I'll do a proper setup here, then I'll perform the experiment for you to see on camera. Good. So to determine the specific capacity using the method of mixtures, what do we do? The solid whose specific heat capacity we want to determine, we set up a retort stand, we put a beaker already, we pour water inside. The purpose of this is to heat the metal that we want to use for the experiment. Good. So what we do is that we put a thermometer inside it and then we obtain an electronic balance. So the electronic balance is used to determine the mass of the metal that we want to use to perform the experiment. So we measure the mass of the metal and then we call it mm, mass of the metal, mm. Good. Mass of the metal, mm. Then after that, what we do is that we put the metal into the beaker we set fire under the beaker to heat the metal. To heat the metal. Good. So whilst the metal is being heated, then what we do is that we pick our um, electronic balance again. Then we determine the mass of the empty calorimeter. So we say let MC be the mass of the empty calorimeter. With a sterile. 
you put the sterile inside because the sterile is also going to absorb heat. Make sure that the sterile is made of the same material as the calorimeter. And make sure the calorimeter is light. Remember, that is one of the precautions that you are supposed to do. That in this case, the calorimeter is lagged. L-A-G-G-E-D. Lagged. Lagging the calorimeter prevents the calorimeter from losing heat to the surrounding. So that is one precaution that you need to take when performing this experiment. Good. Then, once we measure the mass of the empty calorimeter, we pour the liquid, the liquid, whose specific heat capacity we want to measure, we pour it inside it, up to two thirds of it. Make sure you don't pour it to the full of the calorimeter. The reason is that if the calorimeter becomes full, when you bring the mass into the calorimeter, so the water will be splashed off. And remember that you have already measured the mass of the water. Good. So once we do that, we determine the mass of the water and the calorimeter together. The mass of the water and the calorimeter together. Then when we subtract the mass of the empty calorimeter from the mass of the water and the calorimeter, that will give us the mass of the liquid inside the calorimeter. Take note of that. Mass of the liquid inside the calorimeter. That's what we want. Then what we do is that we put our thermometer inside to determine the initial temperature of the water and the calorimeter. We determine the initial temperature of the water and the calorimeter. Then we call that initial temperature theta 1. That is the initial temperature of the water and the calorimeter. Then we determine the, ma the temperature of the metal whilst it is inside the water which is being heated. Let's call that initial temperature of the solid or initial temperature of the metal, yes. The metal or the solid theta 2. We call that temperature theta 2. Then quickly, take note of that, quickly we transfer the metal from the water into the calorimeter. Why do we transfer it quickly? If you don't transfer it quickly, the metal will lose heat to the surrounding. So you have to transfer the solid quickly. That is another precaution, so precaution number two. Then the next thing we do is that the moment we transfer it, we begin to stir. Why are we stirring? That is precaution number three. We stir to make sure there is uniform distribution of temperature in the water, in the liquid. The reason is that if you don't stir, you know water is a bad conductor of heat. Water transfer heat through convection. So if we don't transfer, if you don't stir, the liquid that is closer to the solid will absorb the heat, keep it to itself, and then the other part of this, the liquid wouldn't have the heat. So we start to make sure there is uniform distribution of temperature in the um, system. Then, good. So at this point, something is going to happen. You know, we have a metal whose temperature is high. Let's say temperature of a body water is so 100 or 98 degrees Celsius. And then a calorimeter and um, a liquid whose temperature is low. So we have high temperature and then we have low temperature. High temperature, metal. Low temperature, liquid and calorimeter. So whilst the metal is losing heat, the liquid and the calorimeter will be gaining it. So this process will continue until they get to a point where the two of them will reach thermal equilibrium again. Thermal equilibrium. So when that thermal equilibrium is reached, the temperature of the system will be constant. What that means is that the thermometer will stop reading. So the level of the thermometer will become steady. Then we measure that temperature as theta 3, final temperature of the mixture. Mixture. Solid or metal, liquid, and calorimeter. Final temperature of the mixture. Remember that because we are talking about these three components and we are dealing with sensible heat, sensible heat, which we discussed earlier, what we have done is that, you know, we have obtained the masses, we have obtained the temperatures, which we will use to find the change in temperatures, we are left with a specific heat capacity. So we pick a solid whose specific capacity is known, for instance, aluminium, for instance, copper. So we pick 
the specific capacity of the solid. Let Cl be the specific capacity of the liquid and then Cl be the specific capacity of the metal. Then the theory of the experiment, very important. The theory for this particular experiment is that heat lost by the metal is equal to heat gained by liquid and calorimeter. Heat lost by metal is equal to heat gained by liquid and calorimeter. You see, if your experiment will be very well, it depends on your theory. If you don't get the theory right, you may have challenges. Please take note of that. Good. So from this, we say QM is equal to QL plus QC. So the Qs are quantity of heats, which are sensible heats. So therefore, mass of metal, specific capacity of metal, change in temperature from theta 2 to theta 3. This part always confused students, you know, because of theta 2 and theta 3. They feel that 3 is bigger than 2, so we should rather subtract. Remember, change in temperature is a scalar quantity and it has to be positive. So we don't subtract bigger, tem smaller, bigger temperature from smaller temperature. We always subtract smaller temperature from bigger temperature. Take note of that. Always subtract bigger, smaller temperature from bigger temperature. Let's look at theta 3, final temperature of the mixture. Theta 2, initial temperature of the solid. You know, the solid was inside this one. So it was hotter. The theta 2 is bigger than the theta 1 because the solid was hot. When they brought it, the solid cooled. So theta 2 is bigger than theta 1. So we subtract theta 3 from theta 2. Mass of liquid, specific capacity of liquid, change in temperature of the liquid. Theta 3, final temperature, bigger than the initial temperature of the water and the calorimeter. So we subtract the same temperature for the two of them. Then over here, what are we looking for? We are looking for the specific heat capacity of the liquid. So we make Cl the subject. When we make Cl the subject, we are then able to find the specific heat capacity of a liquid. Good. So let me say this. Let me say this. This particular experiment is, is very interesting. Um, we use the same experiment to determine the specific capacity of a solid. The same experiment, nothing change, only small thing change. The thing that changes is that when you're determining the specific capacity of a liquid, you need a solid whose specific capacity is known. That's why we pick a metal. We don't go and pick a stone somewhere, no. We pick a solid whose specific capacity is known. Then we use it to determine the specific capacity of the liquid. However, when we want to determine the specific capacity of a solid, we pick a liquid, say water, whose specific capacity is known. 4,200 4, joule per kilogram per Kelvin. That is the specific capacity of water. So we pick a liquid whose specific capacity is known. And then we use it to determine the specific capacity of the solid that we don't know. So we go through the same experiment, the same procedure that I have described in this one. Then at the final round, at the final round, instead of making CL the subject, you rather make CM the subject, specific capacity of the metal. Then you have your, your, your experiment done. As simple as that. So I have killed two bears with one stone. What that means is that I will not come again and describe an experiment to determine the specific capacity of a solid. Thank you very much. I hope, I hope, I hope you got the whole description. So what happens is that I have described it. What you have to do is that um, you have you learn the procedure. You keep it in your head so that when they ask you the exam, you can be able to produce it. Good. So let's look at this exercise. Let's look at this exercise. A block of metal of mass zero point five kilograms at temperature ninety seven degrees Celsius is gently lowered into into an insulated copper calorimeter whose mass is 0.05 kilograms, containing 0.9 kilograms of water at 20 degrees Celsius. So the temperature of the insulated copper container and the temperature of the water are the same, 20 degrees Celsius. Take note of that. If the final temperature of the mixture is 25 degrees Celsius, that is final temperature of the metal, the insulating copper and the water is 25 degrees Celsius, calculate the specific heat capacity of the metal giving the specific capacity of water as this and the specific capacity of the copper calorimeter as this. Good. So let's begin. We need these parameters, very important. The masses, the temperatures, and the specific heat capacities. Remember, we are looking for the specific heat capacity of the... Usually what I advise my students to do is that when you are given a question like this, 
um, try as much as possible and write the parameters given to you the question down. When you write the parameters, it will help you not to put a wrong par parameter, um, a right parameter at a wrong place. Sometimes, if you don't write it down, you are picking the specific the mass of calorimeter. You pick the mass of calorimeter, then you give it to mass of water, and then it will give you a lot of problems. Take note of that. Good. So, we go through the solution. Heat loss by metal. That's the theory. Heat loss by metal. It's equal to heat gain by... Not mixture. It's equal to heat gain by water and calorimeter. Heat loss by metal is equal to heat gain by water and calorimeter. So that heat is given by QM is equal to QL plus QC. QL plus QC. Okay, let me go back and show you something. Now, remember that this question is asking us to determine the specific heat capacity of the metal. Good. So you realize that the experiment we have described, we, we, we described how to determine the specific capacity of a liquid. But this question, is, 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 is letting us solve for how to determine the specific capacity of a solid. So what that means is that you, should, you, you, you are going to see in the formulas that everything is the same. The only thing that is different is that we make the CM the subject. So we write our formula like this, just like we do before. Then we put in our parameters. It is CM that we don't have. You see what I said? So when we make CM the subject, finally we get CM, specific capacity of the metal as 527.1 joule per kilogram per kelvin. That is how we deal with it. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters. Yes, I know brothers and sisters because it's not only uh, warriors that are going to watch this. Some of you are going to watch with your ladies. Good. So brothers and sisters, Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, BJ Online, for more videos. And then, if you want online classes, if you want, um, yeah, online classes, that is payable anyway. You 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 link me up with this website. Very soon, the website is going to be developed very well, so that you have. When I say very well, it doesn't mean that it's now not developed well. We want to add a lot of things so that when you go there, you can get a lot of questions and solve them for free. Good. That's what I mean by that. And then you can also link me up with this email address. Thank you very much for being part of the show. It's been your man, BJ. We hope to meet again another time. And then we will look at experiment to determine the specific heat capacity of a liquid using the electrical method and then using the continuous flow apparatus. I'll put the two of them together so that we can we can move very fast. Thank you very much. God bless you. Please share the video.